In this webcast, we're going to look at developing Java applications, Java microservices, locally from a developer experience, and then building and deploying those into Kubernetes. Now, the experience that we're going to look at is and target is how developers do things today and how that might look like when they're building for a cloud platform like Kubernetes. Tr typically and traditionally, developers are creating their apps, creating their wars and their ears and putting them into um, an application server and changing configs and so on. And, you know, in this microservice model, what we're doing is we're, we're creating Uber jars out of our app and we're able to run it directly. We don't need to put things into a application server. But that only gets us part of the way there. That is only part of the story. The other part is the JVM. What is the JVM that it's running on? What is the operating system that it's running on? What are the JVM transitive dependencies and configs and so on? And all of that stuff we can package up as a Docker container. So we can take our app, our JVM, which and our operating system, all of these things are implementation details and must go together. Can't just conti you know, continue doing what we do today by shipping random jars around and hoping that the operating systems and the JVMs are all the same. Uh, what we want to do is take a binary snapshot image of all of those dependencies and move those along in our pipeline, uh, deploy them to a cloud environment or on-premise or wherever. Uh, Kubernetes is the elixir for that. Kubernetes allows us to do that. Um, but as a developer, we want to kind of treat Kubernetes, um, treat our cloud platform kind of like a, an app server, right? Where we take our app and we're actually putting it into Kubernetes with Docker and, and all that stuff. Um, but the developer experience is, is similar. And with some of the Fabricate.io tooling that we've been created, we can achieve a similar developer experience. So let's let's take a look at that. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new Java app using Spring Boot and we're going to build and deploy that into Kubernetes. So first we'll come over here to start.spring.io. We'll pick a version of our of our app that we like or, or of Spring Boot I mean. And then we'll add some dependencies using the Spring Initializer actuator. Just keep it simple for right now. Generate the project that downloads our demo.zip. We'll come over here and move download demo to here, unzip it, and we're going to quickly run a, a script that will add some functionality to our application here and we're going to open it up in our IDE. And if we look here, what is you know, real quick, what is the what is the functionality that we added? Um, fix some imports here, real quick. All we did was add a um, a quick HTTP endpoint that, if we call it at slash API slash hello slash name, it'll return some something. So let's run this just to make sure that it works and it's doing what we think it's going to do. So far we've not done anything too special. Just create a new Spring Boot app. We'll give this a moment to start up. Looks like it's running. API, hello, and some name, and we get a response, right? So our service works, we're playing with it locally, we can iterate and, and add more functionality and so on. Now, what, what happens if we wanna add, you know, we wanna take our app and package it up as a Docker image and a container and deploy it into our cloud environment and deploy it into Kubernetes. The easiest way to do that and keeping with a traditional Java experience is to use the Fabricate Maven plugin. And this Maven plugin is pretty amazing. It allows, allows us to do a lot of things um, with, with Kubernetes and with our, with our Java application. So first we're just going to run this setup goal. And all this setup goal does is add the Maven project, or, or the, sorry, the Maven plugin to our project. Right? So the Fabricate Maven plugin has now been added. 
from here, we want to, just like we may do with a traditional app server, we want to start up the app server and be able to deploy things into it. What we're going to do here is um, run another Maven goal, cluster start, and start and boot up our cluster. And actually, if we take, if we take a quick look at the docs here, if we go to maven.fabricate.io, uh, this will give us the full documentation of the Fabricate Maven, Maven plugin. We can look at cluster start. This will start our local Kubernetes cluster. By default, it'll use Minikube. Or you can specify that you want to deploy a, uh, the OpenShift or the, the you know, Red Hat's distribution of Kubernetes called OpenShift. Pass in a, a flag to do so. Um, and what that'll do, let's run it. What that'll do is go and install. So if you don't have Kubernetes or OpenShift installed locally, it will actually go and get it for you and install it for you. It also go get all the different client libraries that you may need and configs that you may need and just set it up for you. And then it'll start it and install um, the, you know, some of the, the Fabricate tooling that we may need. And I'll, and I'll show you in a, in a sec. And so we might give it a second depending on your internet connection or if you're recording a screencast what bandwidth you have. Um, and we'll give this a sec to, to start up. And it looks like it's, it's coming up. And once, once we have our Kubernetes distribution up and running locally, it'll actually forward us onto uh, I, the Fabricate web console. We'll take that, we're gonna put that in uh, Chrome anyway. We'll put it there for a sec. So now, once we have our Kubernetes distribution up and running, we can, we're going to switch to my demo project. Um, we can run, build and run our application, our Java application, just like you would with Spring Boot colon run. We're actually going to do fabricate colon run. We'll run it. So this is going to create our Docker image for us. It's going to create all of the Kubernetes manifest files, the YAML files that we may need. So if you come over here real quick and look under classes, meta inf, fabricate, we can see that for vanilla Kubernetes or for an OpenShift distribution, um, we, we generate the, the YAML files automatically. So we don't have to dig in and, you know, we can just assume these defaults and, um, and just go with them. And it'll, it'll create that and then it'll actually deploy it inside of our running Kubernetes. And from the Maven command line here, we can see that it's also gonna try to tail the logs for our app that's actually running inside of Kubernetes. So we haven't done anything with setting it up and downloading binaries and trying to figure out Docker files and YAML files and all this stuff. As a Java developer, we were keeping that same experience by using just this simple Maven plugin and, um, and, and we're able to build and, re and deploy into Kubernetes um, by doing fabricate colon run. So it looks like we do have our app coming up. Let's quickly um, demo. Let's quickly try to hit that application. And we'll give it a sec. It's, I think it's coming up. Looks like it is up. Try that again. There we go. There's Spring Boot error page, but let's go to API slash hello slash CE posta. Yes, and now we get the response we want. Um, and so this, this app is running in kubectl get pod. So if you wanted to see it, we can see it is running here. We're tailing, tailing the logs and we, ha and we have it running. We can do all the Kubernetes stuff, service discovery and load balancing and scaling and so on. Now let's say we're, we're hitting our app here a couple times and we realize, oh dang it, there's a, there's a 
an error or a bug somewhere in this, and we want to debug it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to find our uh, our project here, and we're going to do Maven fabricate debug. So again, we're just using the Maven plugin, and what debug is going to do is actually go and and on that pod, on that deployment config, is going to specify that we want to change the JVM options so that we can enable debugging on the on the JVM. So that next time the pod is restarted, as we can see on the top part of the screen, that when the top when the pod restarts, it will have uh, the debug port open and waiting and listening for debugging connections. And it will also port forward the remote running pod into our local machine so that once we've run fabricate debug we can just click come over here to our uh, IDE and add a new config for remote Java debugging oh, not that remote remote Kubernetes debugging Okay, and then click debug, and that will connect directly to our pod that's running our application here. So now, if we set a breakpoint and come back here and do a refresh, we'll actually hit the debug uh, breakpoint there. And so you can do lots of interesting things here. You can do rapid application development. You can hook up the Spring Boot Dev Tools or the Live Reload Tools to um, be able to make changes and have them incrementally updated and, and swapped into your Docker container without restarting everything. There's lots of cool stuff that you can do here. And when you finally get your app in a uh, state where you know it's ready to check it into a Git repo, or push it into a CI CD pipeline, that too is, is made a little bit sim simple. Um, we can just do Maven fabricate, let's see if I have it in here, import, Maven fabricate import. And what that's going to do is if you have the fabricate CI CD tooling um, installed in your Kubernetes cluster, then it will import this project directly into. Um, our CI CD cluster. Oh, let's do um, go back here, default project, and try that. So this will this will Im import our project here into Git for us automatically, and it will allow us to attach a CI CD pipeline to this project. So let's go to this URL. Here is our Fabricate console that got started up earlier when we started up uh, when we did cluster start. If we click here and go to go to our Git repo, and let's see, remember this. All right, we see that our demo code has now been pushed into Git, which is pretty nice. And if we just copy and paste that URL that we saw in the console. Um, we'll just quickly set up the public keys to be able to talk to our Git repo and click on pipeline. And from here, we'll be able to choose a particular Jenkins pipeline for doing continuous integration and continuous delivery. So Fabricate builds its CI CD implementation on top of Jenkins and Jenkins pipeline. And we also have a handful of out of the box predefined pipeline templates that you can use. So these, these pipeline templates are, are written in um, a groovy DSL and stored in, in Jenkins files. And we, so we have a, a set of curated Jenkins files that we can choose from here and attach to our project that will then know how to do build, builds and releases across our predefined environments, so dev or staging or testing or whatever in, in, into production. And in this case, we're going to choose a pipeline that has an approval step. So we'll click Next. 
and we'll give this a moment to, to, to execute and carry on. If we come back into our Git repo here and refresh, we can see a few things have been added. The fabricate.yaml file, which is metadata about this particular project and which environments it has, production, staging, testing, and so on. You can also see that the Jenkins file was checked in. So this Jenkins file is the groovy script that defines our stages and our transitions between the stages and what happens in each stage and what to do if things fail. So we can see that this is just the, following the Jenkins pipeline uh, DSL, which is, which is groovy, and using the Kubernetes, Jenkins Kubernetes clients to be able to launch images and launch our applications. Um, so definitely recommend checking it out. We can see also GitHub, GitHub, Fabricate IO, Jenkins pipeline. And under these different workflows, out of the out of the box pipelines that we have for the different types of technology that you may want to run. So this is not, I'm showing the Java developer experience, but there's, um, it's not limited to Java in, in any in any way. This is anything that can run inside of Linux, anything that can run inside of Docker. Um, so for example, Golang and um, Python and so on. But if we click on Maven, click on Canary Release Stage and Approve, these are the base Jenkins files that you can use. You can also create your own library or augment this or check it into your project like this and uh, change it however you like. So the pipelines are incredibly flexible. If we come back to the Fabricate console, we can see that a build has has been kicked off. It's it's building our Spring Boot app, and we're going to do a release into our staging environment, and and then we'll have. Um, so what what'll be interesting about this is that it'll do a um, an initial build, and it'll run all the integration or sorry the unit tests, build a Docker image, push that into our Docker registry, and it'll do our integration testing. And our integration testing is interesting here because what it's doing is it's deploying the full app and any of its collaborative um, you know, partners, any things that, that maybe it needs other services or databases or message queues or whatever, and spins that up on, a, on the fly in an anonymous namespace inside of Kubernetes and then runs our integration tests against that black box. And if everything succeeds, it'll tear all that stuff down and actually do the rolling upgrade into staging. And since we asked for an approval process as part of this pipeline, we'll have uh, an approval step here that can be implemented with email or Jira tickets or um, chat ops or however. Um, for this little demo, I'm just going to use this, uh, you know, these buttons here right in the console. But we can see that our app has correctly been staged. Click on this. We do what is it, API hello. We get our response like we expect. And come back here. That all looks good. Our integration testing passed. So let's approve it. Proceed. Make the deployment. Deploy it into production. Now, if we have any other changes come through, it'll actually generate a new build and a rolling upgrade into production. So this is the you know the developer focused um, so the tooling that we have for building and running your Java apps, Spring Boot apps, Wildfly Swarm, whatever, on top of Kubernetes and being able to debug it and then eventually get it into the post-commit phase where you're actually um, trying to, you're going to build it and send it off into the pipeline into production. So if you're interested in learning more, come to maven.fabricate.io for more information about the Maven plugin. If you're interested in Fabricate itself, Fabricate.io. And of course, take a look at Kubernetes, Kubernetes.io for more information. And definitely take a look at OpenShift as the enterprise version of Kubernetes, Red Hat's supported version of Kubernetes. So thanks for stopping by.